Welcome, my lovely Libras. Um, this is going to be your October 2024 reading. Um, you know, every time I give a date, though, I think it's really whenever it reaches you in divine timing. I am doing these a little early because I am planning on taking a break uh, probably mid-October. So I thought, you know, I want to try to get everyone's reading out before October. Um, but again... I feel like your reading will reach you in the right time. Um, so this is going to be for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, those intuitively guided. Uh, thank you for paying attention to your intuition. You could certainly have planets in the sign of Libra. Um, you may be in love with the Libra. And by the way, um, I am working with a few new tarot decks. It's a company that I am... Um, what do I want to say partnering with, I think, or at least I'm, I'm trying to consider whether I want to do that yet or not. So they sent me a few decks and one of them is the, um, the Romance Angels. This is a deck I used to have, uh, but before this is when I used to live in Rhode Island. Then I moved to Pennsylvania with my boyfriend. Um, and I had to leave. I could only bring two suitcases with me. So I left a lot behind. And my daughter, who's also a tarot reader, asked if she could keep this deck. And it was very hard to part with them, but I said yes. So uh, this is the first deck I ordered from this new company. And I'm going to do a promotional video. That's why I'll give you the name and everything when I do that promotional video. Um, this is also a, a new deck which we will use, oh, look at that, two of cups. Hmm, hello, two of cups. So, we'll see. But this is called the Red Fairy Tarot. And um, we'll use them for your main spread. We will stay with the Gilded Tarot to clarify or go deeper. You know, we go deep in these readings. That's why these readings are long or longer. I don't know. They don't feel long to me, but, you know, let's just say very in-depth. That's the way I like them. And then, of course, we're going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. And I think I'm going to start with Mother Mary this time. So let's go ahead and officially open up this reading. Um, some of you could be in love with the Libra, by the way. And if that's the case, just remember that your spirit guides know that you're here. So you'll probably receive messages yourself. I do read through my guides. You know, I'm just an open vessel for my guides of the light, who I feel like connect to your guides of the light. And that's why sometimes a reading can resonate with so many people. You know, I feel like we're one big soul family. All right. So let's go ahead and start with Mother Mary. Actually, let me bring the lid down a little bit. There we go. Mother Mary for my lovely Libras. Okay. And by the way, we'll read this from the book at the end of the reading. Hmm, patience. Patience, my child. Um, you, this card reminds me of temperance, which is about divine timing. And that's exactly what it says. I trust in divine timing. You know, I always notice with this image how it looks like a unicorn um, is like circled by this, by this fence. But truth be told, if this unicorn just stood up, it could hop right over it. But this unicorn is just having patience. So to me, that means something's coming towards you, but it is meant in divine timing. It's just, you know, it's funny because that's exactly what I said about your reading in the beginning. Like, I feel like a reading will find you in divine timing. This could be confirmation of that. And we will read it at the end. Um, and I decided that, whoa, for this month, because our readings do turn to love so much um, that I'm going to go ahead. 
I like that they came in a little tin case, by the way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just take a few of the Romance Angels. This is an Oracle deck. And, um, well, I don't know. We'll just add them like bullet points. Let's give them a cut. Look at that. Well, that's weird. Engagement. And it's what's weird is, um, first of all, if you have followed my readings at all, um, you hear me say often that I spend at least 15 minutes um, shuffling each deck that I'm going to use. Like, I, like the decks, I feel like call out to me. And um, I know... You know, like I put all my cards in the upright. I don't do reversals, but if they come out reversed, then I know they're meant to come out reversed. So I just find it interesting that this one wasn't even face down. It was face up on the bottom. Engagement. Engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Okay. Let's take a couple more. Engagement. You know, that reminds me of like the Four of Wands. Four of Wands, they call it the marriage card. I call it a commitment card. Um, You know, it certainly can mean that some of you are going to move into that engagement period. Uh, but it could certainly just mean that, well, it's a higher level. And it is a commitment. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Let your friends help you. Let your friends help you. Who knows better than your friends? Ask for and accept support from others. Ask for and accept support from others. Some of you, your friends might be introducing you to someone. All right, let's put these aside. And then we have, well, I like this, chemistry. Chemistry. There's a strong magnetic attraction here. Look at that. So chemistry is mirroring engagement. And right in between them is let your friends help you. Ask for and accept support from others. And when I say friends, you know, first of all, it could be like your good friends who um, could be setting you up on a date. And it, it, chemistry makes me feel like there's an instant um, attraction to each other. And it is saying that your love life is ascending, not descending, ascending. So we'll see. We'll see what all that means in the main spread. So I'm going to go ahead and give these a shuffle. And I do this for you. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want anybody to think like cards are set up. Or, so I always like to give them a shuffle or two with you here. And this is the first time I'm using this deck. So we'll see what kind of read it gives us. This is really what I, you know, how I determine if I'm going to continue with the deck or not have a lot of decks that kind of get pushed to the back. Um, but sometimes then they, they make their way out to the front. So we'll see. Okay. We have the hangman. The hangman. So interesting that Mother Mary brings out patience, right? Trusting in divine timing. The hangman can be a pause in action for sure. Um, you know, but the hangman's seeking wisdom. It, it's like, I feel like the hangman's like, until I feel sure about something, I'm not going to move forward. Um, and I feel like the hangman's seeking spiritual wisdom, but for this earthly plane. Hangman. The Eight of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles. For some of you, this could talk about something that you want to do in the world, something you want to create. 
maybe you felt like, you know, it hasn't been the perfect time or maybe you felt like you haven't had the way yet. It could be like not trusting within yourself. You know, the Eight of Pentacles is the meaning of it. Well, to me anyways, is the willingness to go into something as the apprentice, but knowing within yourself that one day you will be that master teacher. Eight of Pentacles also answers a question to me, you know, can I be successful? And Eight of Pentacles would say, as long as you put your focus upon it, then the answer is yes. You know, what do you move next to from the Eight of Pentacles? The Nine of Pentacles, successful, self-employment. Doesn't have to be self-employment, but for some of you, I feel like, you know, you like, the, and it's interesting because I'm noticing like these little sparks, these little sparks around them. And it could be talking about epiphanies, ideas that you had on um, the hangman is just like, you know, when's the right time? Is it the right time? It's also about a new beginning though. So the hangman might, you know, first of all, I trust the divine timing. Divine timing may be coming about here. And the Eight of Pentacles can, you know, I feel like it's your craft, whatever you're good with. I often feel like this person works with their hands in some way, but it doesn't have to be that. Um, and again, the hangman seeking spiritual wisdom. So for some of you, this could represent like a spiritual based business. We have the Six of Cups. And interesting, we have the Five of Cups. Interesting. So the Six of Cups, let's slide these all over. Six of Cups, well, I like I like the image here. Um, I feel like the images are a little dark, I have to say, for the camera. But other than that, the Six of Cups really speaks about a period of time where you have, like, good memories of cherry even cherished memories it's like this little this this little child playing with their grandmother you know and a special time some of you you may have a grandmother who is part of your spiritual team and then you have the five of cups next to that five of cups is really focusing on something you have lost it is of emotional nature you know, it's interesting because, again, I'm seeing this grandmother um, and she's just full of joy. It's like she's dancing. It reminds me. I don't know why. I feel like she's Polish. I don't know why. But interesting, I feel that. Um, and, you know, maybe you've been missing her. And I'm seeing grandmother. I mean, it could really be anyone. Um, but I, but I feel like a grandmother's type energy. So five of cups really speaks about where one's focus is at. And it is mirroring the hangman. Um, and the focus on the five of cups is really on what I have lost, but it is a five and five does speak about change. You have an eight, a new beginning, five, change. And when this person decides to make that change or says to oneself, you know what, I'm not going to keep focusing on what I lost. Maybe instead I'm going to celebrate what I had, what, you know, the time I did have. I don't know why, but I also feel like for some of you, you could be moving back like like a physical move back to a place where you do have um, very good memories of. You may be starting something new there. You know, it's like it kind of feels like you're changing your life. Now, in the five of cups, when this person says, I'm not going to keep focusing on the things that I have lost. What do they find? What's behind them? Two cups. 
And to me, that represents soulmate energy. Now, I feel this in two different ways. I feel like this grandmother figure, I feel like, is a soulmate. And that's why, you know, she is now um, part of your spiritual team guiding you on this physical plane. And I feel like that's what the hangman's seeking, this spiritual wisdom on what I do next. You know, some, it feels like some type of change is happening here. And I may have been in this kind of a law type energy, but now I feel like it's about movement. It is about new beginnings, um, like taking your focus off what you have lost and instead like allowing yourself to experience the joy of what was. You know, um, someone could certainly be returning to your life. All right, well, let's keep going. You know, I like the images on the cards. I just wish they were lighter so that you could see them better. But I am saving up for a really good phone so I can shoot my videos straight down. That day will come. I just trust. I trust the divine will find a way for me. You know, I want to say this grandma is like from the old country. Whatever that may mean to you. Definitely of a, of a different generation. We have mm, the Ten of Swords. And then we have the world. So there is that new beginning that I was feeling. And again, Mother Mary saying, trust in divine timing. Well, this feels like something is about to open up. Um, coming under the Eight of Pentacles. You know, and interesting that before it is a Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords to me is, it's a difficult period in my life, no doubt. It's a period in my life where, you know, it's like dagger after dagger. Like, like I take a step forward and then push two steps back. Um, it can talk about a repeat pattern. And some of you may be having that realization like, oh, I keep trying something over and over and over again. And I keep getting the same results over and over again. So just having that realization alone, I feel like gives you, I want to say the power to make whatever changes are necessary because I feel like the Ten of Swords is not an energy we want to stay in. Sometimes it's a little out of our control, but I feel like by the time we get to Ten Swords, we have to stop. We have to like realize like how long am I going to allow? Let's say it's one person or many different situations or maybe it's just the area you're living in, the people you're surrounding yourself with that just keep putting daggers in your back, you know, talk behind your back, that type of thing. But the world really speaks about your spirituality. I feel like the world is when you're really walking hand in hand with divine. You're understanding in the world's energy that you are more than this human being, that you are a spiritual being having human experiences. And some of you, this Eight of Pentacles, it's like, it feels like now is the right time. So the hangman, waiting, wondering, seeking that wisdom so that I can move forward. You know, the hangman's not in any rush, but at the same, in the same breath, the Ten of Swords underneath that, mm, I feel like maybe, maybe it is time to make a move. Maybe it is time to 
look around, see what's around me, who's around me, who's who's talking behind my back, who's putting these daggers in my back. Um, and I kind of feel like this grandmother's energy. Again, I'm saying grandmother. I do feel like this person is 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 a spirit guide. Um, but this is someone I feel would, when you think about them, you you know, you really, it, it puts a smile on your face. This could have been someone who had a lot of wisdom and you would turn to for their wisdom, but they're no longer here. Well, you can still turn to them for their wisdom. Um, because I feel like that's what the message is. Like, I'm still here, my dear. You know, just not in that physical form. And trust yourself. You know, trust in your abilities. Trust in what it is you want to bring to the world. And then bring it to the world. Especially with the world right under it. I feel like with the Ten of Swords, there's no way I can deny. I mean, look at this person. They look like they're in anguish. Right? There's no way... I can deny. I feel like this person is moving from like a big city to like a small town. Hmm. But long, uh, long story short, there's no way I can deny this. These daggers that just keep repeating themselves. And I feel like these epiphanies in the Eight of Pentacles is really kind of like your saving grace. It's what's going to help you change this situation. You know, the world means that there is a new chapter opening up. We have the High Priestess. This is your intuition. I'm seeing these cards for the first time. Um, when I shuffle them, I shuffle them so I don't see them. I like to see the image at the same time you see it. I'm noticing how she's all in white. I feel like some of you are definitely connecting to one of your spirit guides. Or at least you have the ability. And, and I feel like it's the same trust. Trust in that. Like, if you feel my guidance, trust it be so. I also want to remind you in that Five of Cups, when I do change my focus from, you know, the, the danger within the Five of Cups is I can spend, especially with the hangman mirroring it, I can spend a lot of time just focusing on what I have lost, thinking there's nothing left to gain. But that's just not the case. Because again, that five of cups, when this person says, enough of that, I'm not going to focus on th these emotional situations that didn't go my way. I'm going to do something new. And I feel like, you know, if this is talking about like overcoming, let's say, love, I feel like one of the best ways that we can start moving forward is by putting our energy in our creative house. Why? Because I feel like it takes our focus. Here, I'm focusing on the loss. Here, I'm focusing on what it is I want to create. And I feel like that just opens up a whole new part of yourself. Again, the romance angels, your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Friends, ask, ask, ask for and, and accept support from others. I could also talk about your spiritual team. And then chemistry. There's a strong magnetic attraction. I feel like it'll be undeniable.
You know, I get the energy of the Five of Cups because I've been there myself many times where I've been in relationships, thought I was completely head over heels in love, and then things just went south. And, you know, it's hard. It's sad. Um, but in the same breath, I can now look back and be, and thank God that I'm no longer in you know, who I was missing, if this is talking about love, you know, like romantic love, um, you know, I can even, I, I thank God that some things ended and some were against my, you know, against my control. But yet in the same breath, We have the Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands is about standing your ground. Interesting though, I'm looking at this image and it's like he's speaking, but it doesn't feel like in a defensive way. And the Seven of Wands can, can be, you know, can be a little ego, uh, but I'm not feeling that here. I'm feeling more about like if there's something I want to do in the world, I feel like other people are listening. We have the nine of wands. This person looks exhausted. It's coming under the hangman and under the ten of swords. This person looks exhausted. But he's keep he's still moving. He's moving towards the light. You know, the, the Nine of Wands, I, I call the Nine of Wands person my spirit warrior. And that's because I'm bold enough to really reflect upon my life, at least the last chapter, or let's just say these ten swords. And I'm just looking at them for, you know, why do they keep happening? I'm breaking it down. I'm understanding it. I'm moving away from it. Remember, nine is about a chapter. And we run in nine-year chapters. So this can talk about the end of a chapter. And then the world would, would be the beginning of a new chapter. This is not an energy where you want to judge yourself. You just want to look back and say, okay, how have I grown from this? Sometimes it's just Sometimes it's just that realization of, you know, why am I surrounding myself with people who just keep putting daggers in my back? Is that how I want to live my life? Do I want more? I feel like you should expect more. You know, and look at your past as the wisdom that you've really gained. You know, sometimes it is bold. You have to be bold to say to whoever's putting these swords in your back, no more, no more. I know who I am now. It may have taken me time and that's okay. But I do know who I am now. You know, this is reflection, but final reflection. So I feel like something is definitely coming to an end, but it feels good. Like, you know, I'm saying good. I'm not going to say easy, but I am going to say it's, it's a good thing. We have, well, that's probably why I was feeling it, the seven of swords. Hmm. This person's dressed in this dark cloak, like hiding in the night. Seven of Swords, not a great energy. Um, can be deception, envy. Can be 
liars, cheaters. Definitely feels like it's tying back to the Ten of Swords. Some of you, you know, you may just have, you may just, you may be starting to have these realizations that I have to think about who I'm surrounding myself with. Um, and it's interesting because you have another seven, the seven of wands. And the seven of wands really is about standing your ground. But then when I see the seven of swords, I think, Sometimes it's not worth standing your, your ground. Sometimes the best thing you can do is move away from it. It can also relate to one's thoughts, though. But I feel like someone or maybe multiple people just weren't treating you good. You know, not treating you. But listen, I feel like they're not treating you well. But I also feel like I have to have that realization. Like, I've got to be willing to make the change, the move that's needed to really enhance my life. You know, with the Ten of Swords and the Seven of Swords and the Hangman, Again, it can talk about energy where you may have had certain dreams and they've been held back because of other people's words, other people's beliefs. This is this feels like this is about believing in you now. Again, I feel like this spirit guide is like, believe in, if you can't believe in yourself, believe in me. There's happier days to be found. All right, keep going. We have the Knight of Swords. So this is communication. Interesting because it's coming under the Six of Cups and under the High Priestess. And the High Priestess is following the world. And I feel like that's just saying... Trust in these decisions you may be making about your future. Like, be bold in your decisions. Trust in your abilities. This can be communication from someone that you used to know. You know, someone back in the day. Um, he does look like he's pointing to the future. We have, look at that, two knights. Knight of Swords and now the Knight of Wands. Well, Knight of Wands, fast-moving energy. But it's full of passion and desire. And it's interesting because it's mirroring that Five of Cups where I am focusing on what I've lost. And once I make the change that the Five asked me to, I think things start moving very quickly in you know in your favor this can talk about someone that you meet you know someone you may not even expected to meet but yet it's also mirroring chemistry and that's exactly what i would say with the knight of wands like full of chemistry and then with that comes the King of Cups. So King of Cups can represent um, Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces, but doesn't have to. To me, the King of Cups is someone, you know, if it's relating to love, let's say. This is someone who um, really enjoys being in relationships. If he was reversed, I would say no, run. This is someone who, in reverse, can easily give their love to others. And maybe it's not so much to me, but he's not. He's in the upright. And I often feel with the King of Cups that their energy just, and I feel this with you also, like having that special partner by yourself, by your side, you know, like if something happens during my day, you're the first person I'm going to call. 
He's coming right over that Knight of Wands. So it does feel like there's change happening. It may have taken some time. Again, that hangman seeking that wisdom, right? But seeking wisdom for my next steps on this physical plane. Moving into the Eight of Pentacles. Some of you, I feel like, you know, it's about, it's about bringing your dreams to life. It's about bringing your abilities that maybe you've always had. You know, the one thing with the Eight of Pentacles, though, is to me, it signifies I don't need to know everything to begin this new path. I just need to take these sparks, right? These ideas, these epiphanies. And just start to move into it. I feel like the rest just kind of opens up. You know, if some of you have, have had that question, should I do this? Should I make this move? Should Can I trust within myself? Will I be successful? That answer is yes. But it also says, as long as you focus on that. And I feel like it's one of the best ways to overcome, you know, the things that didn't go right, you know, the Ten of Swords, again, someone, it could certainly be energy where people were holding you back from your own dreams, your own desires, what it is you want to do in the world. And for some of you, this could be brand new ideas that are coming to you. And I feel like they're guided to you from your spiritual team. High priestess, I just want to listen to my intuition, not all this loud noise over here. My intuition. You know, that's where your spiritual team reaches you. Like in your gut. Yes, sometimes there's outward signs, but then moving according to that. The world tells me that it's this Ten of Swords energy, the Seven of Swords energy. Um, it can come to an end, but it is me that needs to make that movement, right? First, maybe have that realization. I feel like that's what the nine of wands is. Don't judge yourself. You know, we've all, you know, I, I don't know. I, I want to say like, we've all done stupid things. We all have ended up with someone who, you know, in the long run, wasn't worth our time, you know, free will decisions. But I also get that feeling, you know, when I know better, I do better. And now I feel like you're starting to know better. And therefore, you're starting to do better. Trust yourself. Bring those ideas to the world. Be open to who you may meet along the journey. It could be someone so completely different than you expected. Some of you, this can certainly mean... Like I felt in the beginning, like, you know, like I'm either moving back to, I want to say like a hometown or a place that holds special memories for me. Even if maybe I just allow my mind to travel there. I feel like what that does, it does take your focus off, you know, what I have lost. Because again, the danger in the Five of Cups is... I can get lost in that energy. It can turn into woe is me. And with the Ten of Swords following that, that may have happened for a period of time. I've been there. I've done that. You know, that's our human mind. That's our human mind. All right, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. The chariot. Well, that looks like movement. Now, it doesn't have to mean physical movement, but it does feel like movement changes within your life. Um, this is Cancer's major arcana, by the way. But the chariot is energy, or let me put it this way. The chariot is driven by your intentions. You tell the chariot where to go. And I feel like the chariot shows when you yourself have found some type of balance within your life. Again, I feel like for some of you, you're really just, you're looking at your life 
You're analyzing it. What's working? What's not working? Who am I surrounding myself with? Who's putting daggers in my back? Who's talking behind my back? And do I need to put up with that? And what do I need to do to change that? I feel like it put the focus back on you. The chariot speaks about unlimited potential. And I love that with the Eight of Pentacles. Like truly unlimited potential. You know, in the Eight of Pentacles, sometimes we don't know that until we move into that. Again, I feel like whatever you're doing there, it feels like these sparks of ideas, but I also feel your spiritual team is there to help you. Help you create, well, it kind of feels like a different life. I feel like this King of Cups, male or female, by the way, is relating back to this energy up here. Chemistry, it's right in the line with them. Chemistry. Remembering that five of cups when this person makes that change. There's two cups. That's a soulmate energy. And then the knight of wands also mirroring that. You know, that is chemistry. That is passionate. And it can move quickly. And that can even be a little scary. But you can always slow it down. All right. Let's go ahead and... Take the Gilded Tarot over this. You know, I feel that your spirit guides, you know, they recognize everything you're going through. But I feel this sense of being proud of you. Being proud of you. And... You know, uh, like, I'm always proud of you, but I feel proud that you, you were bold enough, or you will be bold enough just to examine your life, like in the Nine of Wands. And it's really about how you have grown. You know, this can talk about the people around you have not, but you are. Sometimes people naturally, you know, as we ascend, those who do not, it's like the universe naturally wants them to fade away. Our human self can tend to bring them back. And that could be why this could be a repeat pattern. Like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready to let you go yet. But yet at the same time, then the Seven of Swords comes out. So I don't feel like there's much change there. So I feel like the change in this situation needs to come from you. And also remembering that you're not alone. Even if you feel alone, you're not alone. You have the most high of love. I feel like the best thing you could do here is follow your intuition. And I don't want you to forget that the world is here and the world does speak about a new chapter. And, you know, the world is the last card in the Tarot. So I always feel that it's the closest energy to God. Or another way of saying that is it's really when I feel like my spirituality is coming alive. I know that I'm more than just this human being. These are these are experiences that I've gone through that maybe my soul wanted to go through. And, you know, I feel like a lot of times, like this feels like an old souls type of energy because I feel like old souls come into this lifetime and they don't ask for like, you know, make everything just beautiful and easy. No, give me those lessons. Because I want my soul to expand. You know, I often see um, in my mind's eye that when we cross over, when we leave this earthly, this earthly plane, that there's a whole team of younger spirits, younger souls who are about to ascend on this world and you become their teacher. 
you know, and if you think about that, you know, when I do cross over and I have these souls like, tell me all about Earth. What was it like? I don't want to say, well, it's nothing but tens. It's nothing but swords in your back. You may say, I had a lot of swords in my back, but let me tell you what I did. Let me tell you how I overcame that. Let me help you help yourself. All right. Oh, wow. My deck's all mixed up. That's interesting. All right. Well, we're going to take them like they come. We have the Seven of Cups over the Hangman. That makes perfect sense. Seven of Cups is really about trying to make a decision. What do I do? What do I do? Um, it can feel a little chaotic. And for some of you, it may talk about the needing to be grounded, to find a way to ground yourself. Trust your intuition as it relates to making this decision. You know, it is cup, so it could be an emotional decision. But I really feel like it's relating to your life. Like in all areas. And I feel like when I change one part of my life, naturally, other parts start to change with it. We have the five of pentacles over the eight of pentacles. Some of you could have lost a job. And... You know, it, you could have lost a job. You could have lost a love. Five of Pentacles is really about something that happens outside of your control. And I don't feel like I really have the luxury of just like crying in my bed too long. I have to keep moving, especially if it's relating to my money. So I love that it's coming over the Eight of Pentacles. You know, there may be a day, let's say it is a job that you lost. There may be a day that comes where you're going to be thankful because now you're doing your thing. Then we have the King of Pentacles, um, Virgo, Cancer, no, Virgo, Capricorn, or Taurus. But, you know, doesn't have to be any of that. You know, to me, the King of Pentacles is someone, when they look at life, they look at the big picture. They look at the, the big picture of it all. Because I also talk about someone who's coming in when it's coming over to Six of Cups. And I feel like good old grandma is the one who's guiding them in. I don't know why I'm shuffling that way. You know, whether this is a grandmother who is guiding you, I feel like really what this is saying is this spirit guide has lived on earth before, um, probably around, probably within your lifetime. Though it can be an ancestor that you don't know, but they still love you. They love you as as their own. Um, we have the three swords coming over that five of cups. Well, that makes sense also. This is heartache. You know, I feel like this has already happened. This is not something I'm predicting in the future. It's coming over the Five of Cups. So it is talking about the loss. It is talking about the pain and the hurt. Yet it is mirroring the Six to Seven of Cups. So again, it is about making a decision after the fact. I feel like that three of swords, be honest with you, I do feel the pain of it, but I also feel, I feel that healing. I feel that energy will heal because I feel your life is changing. And I feel like as your life changes, so do the energies around it. Hmm.
you know, it's also interesting. I'm looking at this person in the Seven of Swords. And if this is someone that is coming into your life, just their image, like, like they're listening to what you have to say. You know, I just did a, a no contact reading and it was about love. And um, I feel some of that energy here. So someone could have been in and out of your life. And you may have given them a lot of time. But this feels like someone new. And this feels, and the reason why I say that I feel the energy of that no contact reading is because I feel like this is someone who is going to listen to you. Like, tell me all about it. I want to hear it. I want to help you. We have justice. There's your major arcana. Coming over that ten of swords. I don't think there could be a better place for it. To me, justice is about cutting ties. You know, to me, it means that I feel like my life is, I don't feel balanced within my life. I feel unbalanced. Doesn't feel good. So... It, it represents cutting ties, cutting ties to the things that's keeping you unbalanced. And justice is really about making you whole again after the fact. You know, it's following that three of swords. It's coming over the ten of swords. It's very clear that there are certain ties that need to be cut, whether they be energetic or actual people or a person. Can also talk about karmic energy. You know, some of you could have been karmic lessons that you've been going through, and they're difficult. They are difficult, but you know, the beauty within a karmic lesson is when you learn that lesson, you've learned it for eternity. And I feel like, and you learn it for the next generation and the generation that follows. Like, I feel the importance within that. But justice is really about making you whole again first. I got to cut those ties to what's ever kept me unbalanced. And then look at this, the Ace of Wands right over the world. Well, here is that passion. Here is desire. This is inspired action. No wonder I saw those sparks of inspiration in the Eight of Pentacles. This is inspired action, but it is action. You know, like I feel like in the Ace of Wands, this is the one that I, I do have to reach out and accept. But passion, desire, not just for another, but for yourself, your ideas, bringing them to life. This just feels like the perfect time. You know, divine timing. I feel like divine timing's been waiting on you. And I don't mean that to judge you, uh, because I feel like that's a lot of the time. You know, for us to have these realizations of who, who we've been giving our energy to and how have they been treating us? You know, had things been fair in your life? Justice is about what's fair and just within your life. It seems like the minute I cut these ties, boom, the Ace of Pentacles comes in right over the world, the next chapter. But, you know, in the world's energy, I feel like this chapter is for the rest of my life. So whatever I'm creating within this chapter, I feel like it's only going to grow and grow and grow. So as it relates to my money, it's just going to get better and better and better. Um, I feel like inspiration will, will continue to follow as it relates to love. It only ascends, you know, as I 
make these cuts, no longer accept, you know, who and what isn't treating me right. And I really start putting that focus back on me again and believe within myself, then I feel like everything just starts to open up for you. I feel like that Ace of Wands couldn't have come at a better place. We have the King of Wands. Interesting. Um, so we have three kings on the table. King of Pentacles, King of Wands, and the King of Cups. King of Wands, to me, listen, to me, this is someone, if, and it's coming over your intuition. It's coming over the High Priestess. You know, the High Priestess is, um, I feel like the one who... How do I say this? Like, is in care of the Akashic records. Like, everything is written. Everything. Every situation, every, everything is written within the Akashic records. And I don't even know why I'm saying that right now. But anyways, this King of Wands, this is someone to me who puts action behind their words where i feel like what you've been dealing with is the opposite so if i say i love you i show you that i love you if i say that i want you i prove to you that i want you and then we have the page of cups page of cups you know, Page of Cups to me is about your inner child. This is about learning, you know, who you are and and learning to love yourself again. You know, knowing that you're a child of God. Knowing that you deserve the highest form of love. But I also have to be of that vibration. I have to know that. And to me, the page is, you know, I also feel a page is what's in the atmosphere. So for some reason, again, I pulled the romance um, angels before your reading. And the first thing it talks about is your love ascending to a higher vibration and in chemistry and it's showing us chemistry. I feel like what you want to be careful of here is you don't allow the people of the past or even the people of the current who aren't treating you well, you don't allow them to close down that loving, nurturing, beautiful side of yourself. You know, I feel the day will come where it is their loss that you are now gone. It's their loss not yours, because I feel like you're moving on to bigger and better things. Definitely the inner child needed to heal from this broken heart. And the cutting of the ties mirrored by the page of cups. Hmm. I also feel like this is saying the potential of love is in the atmosphere. Interesting how we have the three kings right here. Hello world again. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is connecting you to another. But listen, this means that this person would also um, spiritually ascended. This is someone who does live um, through their spiritual nature. This could be talking about two people who have literally cut ties to, you know, the people in their lives, and then they find each other. Coming over the Nine of Wands. 
you know, justice right above it. Cut those ties. Boom. The new chapter opens. Justice. Cut those ties. Boom. The Ace of Wands opens up right over the world. You know, the one thing I want to say with the Nine of Wands, it is about reflecting on one's life. But it's not about judging yourself. You know, don't be hard on yourself. And just understand that, like, we all, like, find ourselves sometimes surrounded by difficult people. But what can we learn from that, right? The one thing I probably learned is what I do not want in love. You know, if I have friends who are like stabbing me in the back, well, then I'm no longer going to call them my friend. Strength card. Beautiful. That's the ability to overcome really anything. And it is about looking within with the strength card. But looking within gives you this real sense of courage. And I feel like when you find that courage, nobody can take it from you. It is mirroring another eight. So again, a new beginning. You know, I feel the reflection over your current and your past is just as important as what's about to be. Because I have to understand where I've been to really know where I'm going. It is an eight. Again, new beginning. It's also the number of infinity, though. As above, so below. No beginning, no end. I feel like a lot of you are old souls. And these experiences you've, got, you've been going through, they're teaching you. And it doesn't have to be major lessons. Sometimes it's just I'm learning that I don't have to take all this bullshit. I don't have to take these swords in my back. I'm better than that. I'm spiritually evolving. And those who are not, well, maybe there's just no room for you in my life anymore. This is courage. Also the card of Leo, by the way. Eight of Wands. Wow. Fast moving energy again. Coming right next to the Knight of Wands. Over the Knight of Swords. Also what I think about, I bring about. You know, it always reminds me of the law of attraction. Thinking about the intentions I'm putting out into the universe. And then the universe meeting those intentions. Or another way of saying that is, you know, where is my vibration? And the universe must meet you right where you're at. So I definitely see the value in evolving here. Because I feel like as you evolve, so do your intentions. And so does what the universe brings back to you. And then the Page of Pentacles. Interesting. So Page of Pentacles to me talks about a learning experience. I've been learning, right? I've been evolving, but I've been learning. And I really know that in the Page of Pentacles. I also feel though... You know, it's interesting because we have the Page of Pentacles with the King of Pentacles. We have the Page of Cups and the King of Cups. It may be two people who, you know, I, I hate to always say already know each other, but you do know each other as souls. And it's a very familiar energy. So whether this is someone, you know, of a younger time, which can definitely represent a page, especially when you see the counterpart, the king or the queen. But I don't always read it as like it has to be someone of this lifetime. But I do feel like this is talking about, you know, as it relates to love. I feel like it's talking about a couple different things. But as it relates to love, I feel like there's going to be, a, you know, this person is going to feel familiar to me. I also feel like this is representing someone who is different from what you have known, because I feel like this is someone who will definitely put, you know, the actions behind their words. So if I say, I love you, I mean it. And I'm going to show you probably every day. 
Like you will be my special person. Some of you, you know where I felt that movement could be talking about going back to a place that you went to school where you were learning. And maybe there's someone, you know, and again, I feel like it kind of might, you know, it probably is going to happen in an unexpected way. Some of you are reconnecting with old friends and they may just have the perfect person in mind for you. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything, you know, it's interesting because I always like think, should I like clarify anything else? Because to me, it feels very clear. But for you, I feel like I just want to do a little bit more clarification. So I think I want to. Well, I think I'm just going to go across the middle of the spread, but looking forward, not back, looking forward. Hello, fool. Hello, new beginning. Hello, leap of faith. You know, the fool is someone who has been through it, but has learned that I'm not going to bring the pain and the hurt and all the bullshit in this next chapter with me. I'm just going to take the wisdom with me. This is about taking a leap of faith on yourself. And maybe even in love. But it does represent yourself. Take that leap of faith. Trust what you're feeling. And then look at this, the Eight of Cups. Well, there is movement again. But you know what I love about this image? Is this person, first of all, the Eight of Cups can talk about examining those cups that have knocked out that have been knocked over you know the love that hasn't gone right whether it be platonically romantically or both this person's walking away from that this person's allowing themselves to have a new beginning i'm no longer any energy of woe is me you know and i do feel like this energy of like whoever loses you well Too bad. Too bad. You're onto bigger and better things. You know, you're leaving these emotional situations behind you. You're taking a leap of faith on yourself. Two cards that are coming back to back that talk about new beginnings. You know, seven of cups here over the hangman. Well, I feel like now you've made that decision. And the decision is to move forward, not back, forward. Even if some of you are moving back to a place, it's still forward, forward-looking energy. All right, let's see if anything else wants to come out. Wow. Well, hello, two of cups. So there's my confirmation. There's that confirmation. That within that five of cups energy, when I am focusing on those who are putting daggers in my back, those who have broken my heart, you know, where I thought this was going to be my love life, this was going to work out, even if it's friends, um, I now have that realization. You know, I find it, I love when these types of confirmation come out. Because the very first card we got was talking about your love ascending to a higher level. Well, that's what the, that's what the Two of Cups is. These are soulmates. And look at them, eye to eye. They recognize each other's souls. Even if I don't know you in this lifetime, I know you. And they know you. But it did, you had to be bold first. You had to say no more. No more. No more daggers. No more opportunities to break my heart. No more holding me back 
from the things that I want to create in my life, the dreams that I, you know, the picture I had in my mind of how I wanted my life to be. Now, this can be completely unexpected. And it probably is going to be unexpected, though I am telling you about it. Um, Because I feel like first it's following you taking that leap of faith on yourself. You, in the Eight of Cups, putting the emotional bullshit behind you. You moving into the world's energy. Divine timing feels like it just has happened. This is go time. And again, I can either keep my focus on what I have lost, be sad, or I can say, no, no more. No more. And you know what, Libra? I don't feel like it's just talking about love. I feel like it's also talking about your ability to create within this world. And I would not be surprised if, you know, these very experiences are what helps you in the long run. Who knows? I could be writing a book about, you know, when you see the Ten of Swords and the Seven of Swords, sometimes they can talk about narcissistic type energy. And I'm a big believer in the only way that you can end that energy is to leave it. I can't fix them. It's not my job. It's not going to work anyway. It doesn't mean I have to accept it. And I know it's hard. Change is hard. But I feel the payoff, the payoff of these changes are beautiful. And I want to go right back to your beautiful spirit guide, who I feel is so active in all of this. You know, Mother Mary, patience. But I feel like the patience is first for you to have these realizations. Whatever this may mean to you, use your spiritual ears. Because, again, the Ten of Swords, it doesn't just have to talk about a lover. It can talk about people in my life. It can talk about the people I surround myself with. I may be making completely new friends. I may be reconnecting with old friends. But I know one thing. There's chemistry heading your direction. It takes you to take this leap of faith. To put the past behind you. Just take the wisdom with you. Right? Because once you've learned a lesson, you've learned it. Why repeat it? You don't have to. And I feel like you are moving into a much more spiritual time. It makes sense that that's when a soulmate would enter your life and you their life, by the way. You know, I also felt that when I saw two world cards... So I often feel in soulmate energy, we do mirror each other. So I wouldn't be surprised uh, because I felt like this, um, the person in the seven of wands, I felt like it's more about them listening to you and your experiences and what you've been through. And I feel like they're using their spiritual ears, but I also feel a very loving heart. And I feel like you are returning that favor. And that's where you're going to figure out, like, wow, we have a lot of things in common. You know, it could look differently, but still, a lot of things in common. The attraction feels like it's going to be immediate. That could scare you a little bit. That's why the fools, like, just take a step into it. You know, I don't need to know if this two two of cups is going to go the whole way to ten of cups. That the chariot kind of does signify that, you know, if I put my intentions there, just like the Eight of Pentacles says, if you're willing to, whatever you're willing to focus on is what you will grow. That can be also the bad things, though. If I keep focusing on the bad, do I not keep bringing the bad to me? What if I have a change of heart? What if, what if I have a change of mind and I start focusing on all that can be? 
and I believe in myself. Even if no one else around me is believing in me, your spiritual team is believing in you. I believe in you. And I'm telling you, the day will come. The day will come. And your life is going to look different. And you are going to look back. And you're going to be proud of yourself for the changes that you've made. The realizations that you've had. The lessons that you've learned. And where you are at this point. Right? Taking a leap of faith. On yourself. Eight of Cups singular energy. This means that probably each one of these soulmates needed to needed to be needed to what do I want to say? Needed to go through that eight of cups on their own. I don't feel like this is anyone who's tied to anyone else. And again, I just want you to look at the image. Like, I see you. I see you. I see you for who you truly are. And I see you. Wow. All right. I'm going to read Mother Mary. Um, sometimes I read Mother Mary and sometimes I don't, but I feel like this is calling for it. So I am going to read it. Patience. God's timing is perfect, as this message reminds you. When you pray for help, that request is heard and answered. If your prayers involve other people, their free will decisions influence the timing of the outcome. Heaven knows this and devises ingenious solutions that arrive at, ex at exactly the right moment. You receive this message as a reminder to have patience with God's plans and solutions. If you try to control, force, or push your own agenda, you may miss out on an infinite, an infinite, infinitely better alternative. Ask Mother Mary to help you demonstrate her infinite wisdom and trust in God's timing. Amen. Maybe that means I was trying to control these people, the Ten of Swords. But again, if it's like any type of narcissistic energy, don't try to control it. Just leave it. You know what I mean? Like, leave it. Let them live in their little karmic life, their little backstabbing world. And you move on to what feels like a beautiful beautiful time in your life and I also want to say I feel like with the world showing up tw up two times it is talking about not just what you do in the world but also who you love in the world and I feel like it is speaking about for the rest of this lifetime now I can't guarantee that because there's free will and nobody can ever ride your free will but boy, do I feel like you, your spiritual team, and ex and one in particular, is really trying to help to guide you. Feel it in your gut. Feel it in your gut. And then trust that. That is always going to be your choice. But I hope that you trust it. And I hope you follow it the whole way home. The whole way to this soulmate energy. The whole way to this new, beautiful, creative ideas you have, you're, you have. And again, becoming the master teacher. How to go through the lessons, right? I have to learn to become that master. But you are. Chemistry. Two of Cups. Love is ascending. Creative ideas coming your direction your intuition, take a leap of faith, let the past be the past, remember the chariot, your intentions tell this chariot where to go. So keep those intentions high, and then it really is unlimited potential. Amen. Amen.
men. You know, I was going to go back and clarify the kings, but I feel like the kings, you know, and I say kings, it can be male or female. Because uh, remember, we have masculine and feminine energy within ourselves. Um, but I just feel like it's different people for different, you know, it's just different people. Though I also feel what each one of them represents. Yeah, King of Pentacles, I'm looking at it from the big picture. King of Wands, I put action behind my words. You know, by the way, the soulmates is coming right over that energy. King of Cups, I want to be in a relationship. I appreciate a relationship. I appreciate love. If he was in reverse, I would say no. Some of you, yes, you may already know this person. It may be someone from back in the day. But listen, all of you know this person because you are soulmates, whether you've lived in this lifetime together or not. You're about to. All right, guys, I'm going to leave that there. Wow. Happy October. And by the way, you know, it's interesting because when I put, like I say, October, I feel like this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. And, you know, again, this reading will find you when it's meant to find you, when you're ready. You know, when you can listen with your spiritual ears. And sometimes you may find it before that, but then something may draw you back to it. And you hear completely different messages, just as you were meant to. So, I put zero restrictions upon that. The only reason I put October is because I have to put a date. I don't have to, but... So, if this is just the beginning, I love you guys. By the way, I didn't give a shout out to the Libras in my lo in my life. Um, shout out to my nephew Sean, who is September twenty fourth. Um, my beautiful granddaughter Lily, who is October fourteenth. Sean's mom, my sister Tracy, who has crossed over October fifteenth. Um, beautiful, beautiful souls. Very artistic souls, each and every one of them. So, I'm going to let that be, guys. I love you. I thank you. Um, I want to welcome anyone who's new. Welcome to our soul family. And for those who've been with me, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for those who've been like really sticking up for me. I've been getting a lot of negative comments about your readings are too long. And I get it. And trust me, I don't let it bother me anymore. Um, you know what I mean? Like, like they were probably meant to hear the reading. They just didn't have the patience to listen. Well, there's nothing I can do about that. So, but, uh, you know, you guys stick up for me. And um, I love you. I just do. I love you guys. So, uh, I can't wait to hear the messages from you. And some of these are going to be future messages about how this is evolving in your life. And I can't wait to hear them. I love you. Thank you. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.